Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, and I would like to preface this next video as it's actually ripped from one of my long-term analysis videos, and I thought that it kind of deserved its own standalone video as I want to be able to document these more long-term sort of analyses over time. Of course, it goes without saying that this is, you know, very experimental, and we're looking very, 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 very far down the road. So I hope that I'm very deliberately clear in all the different metrics that we go over within this video, some a little bit more well-tested than others, and with that said, I hope this one serves you well. I will very likely be adding to it over time uh, too, as there is just, well, more and more things kind of coming to mind, but have to go through the initial rigmarole. So over time, very likely we'll be adding to this. So check back in. And with that said, I hope you enjoy. What I want to talk about now is long-term ways to document the potential next high Bitcoin. Uh, first and foremost, we'll talk about the Pi cycle uh, indicator. Um, which I do, which obviously we talked about here before, and now a few other people talking about it as well. That's cool, though. That's that's obviously cool. I want to give a shout out to uh, No No Ringo, um, who created the version that I'm using, and then Caretaker came in and he put a reverse function on it. Pretty fucking cool stuff to see the community working together. Or I, I don't think No No Ringo is uh, is part of the community, but apparently he's aware, uh, and that's really really awesome to see people working together. So uh, so so credit to that because we all get to benefit from it. And of course, we have seen this very very interesting um, interpretation of it over time where the pi cycle indicator not only well has gotten most of the mark cycle highs except i mean it's basically gotten all the mark cycle highs that have been relevant since it could be accurately populated since eh, we'd, we'd call this like early 2013 getting the high right here before you know what was a phenomenally nasty pullback we're talking about a pullback of uh <laughs> maybe a crash is more appropriate of a term 80 percent right there almost uh the next one riding over here calling the high and then going all the way down about 88 percent over the next uh, year year and a half and then of course we have the next market cycle in 2017 2018 and same thing right here where bitcoin plays out a about an 86 percent uh pullback <laughs> crash um uh, after the signal was given. Now, these signals typically happen within about a week of the actual high being put in, sometimes a little bit uh, more accurately, sometimes a little bit less. But, you know, you can just kind of decide for yourself. And I do think that this warrants uh, its own sort of segment here, as we do see this one, you know, giving a signal, technically crossing and getting that, uh, getting the bearish cross, letting you know that the high is going to be put in relatively soon, but still does actually travel up quite a fair bit. It's a warning signal, though. One, two, three, four days until the, well, actually five days on the, on the actual high. And it actually goes up 100 percent after the signal was given that's a very interesting by the way the long signals on this not good <laughs> they're not to be used like that is is what i'm trying to say next one over here actually gets the the ultimate high pretty much perfectly um to the day and this one uh well well I, I, that one's literally on the day so actually we don't have anything to talk about there then we go to 2017 2018 and come on there we go and here we go, here's a $20,000 high. And this one also gets it uh, one day before, or maybe two days before. Yeah, about two days before here. Yeah, one, two right there on the high. And, uh, and then boom, massive drop off for the next year, year and a half. So with that in mind, it does have a pretty damn good history, at least for the history that we have on Bitcoin thus far. Now, I've also kind of been um, uh, playing around with this for a while now, and uh, and I've shown you this before, but I think it'd, it'd be wise to go over it again. Um, we do see that this accelerates incredibly violently once it reaches a, thir a certain threshold. So what is that threshold? Well, that threshold is when the reverse function is about a little bit less than 80 percent away from the current price action so you can see this right here it starts to creep down like incredibly aggressively down towards uh, uh sorry down towards the price action and that's when the rally is really that's that's kind of like your leading indicator as to when the rally is over i mean it's, it's a derivative obviously you know we're just taking like the rate of change here so this one's about 75 percent when when doom essentially is is uh, is being spelled uh, again it goes about 100 percent above or yeah it, it goes for another 100 percent rally to the upside there before the actual high is put in but major major warning signal obviously and i'd even say back around here is where things really start to get a little more aggressive and that's around the 75 to 80 percent ish region then we can go to the next cycle in 2014 and very similar results right here you can see that this starts to really increase its aggressiveness about four to five days beforehand and how far away is price action during that time a little bit more than 75 percent less than less than 80 more than 75 so pretty damn good right there and that one actually does pretty pretty much nail the high on that uh, on that one and then of course we got 2017 2018 right here and well if you guess the same thing then you are fucking right <laughs> and what do we see right here we do see this one actually that's well i'm taking a little bit too too low where does it start to really drop off right here 
right here. And again, this one actually, yeah, this one really, really, really accelerates in about 73 and a half percent. So we do see a pretty obvious range going on right now. And for reference, um, where Bitcoin price action currently is to the reverse function, how far away are we? Well, we are about 93 and three quarters percent away. So is it that relevant for putting in a high right now? I would say, I'd argue, no, of course, you're, you know, you're free to put your own interpretation on that as well. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll kind of go over a lot of other things that may support that as well. So again, I want to be very deliberately clear with this as well. Um, God, that fucking typing in the background is so goddamn annoying. Seriously. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to think. And then it's like, it's like little etchings in your brain. Um, anyways. Uh, so yes, you know, we have that right there. A, you know, a pretty damn good way to kind of judge the, the next market cycle type. And as you can see right here, I'd say that that's still pretty damn, you know, not really relevant. It doesn't really become relevant until it goes into like the 80% region. Okay, so after we get through this one, what do we want to go to next? Well, this next one, we can also use to kind of judge a mark cycle high. And that is the Bitcoin VWAP ratio, of which I used to show this a lot in the past. And what I want to show right here is, or should I explain it first? I mean, it's it's a VWAP ratio is what it is. Just a bunch of different VWAPs essentially. Uh, you can read you can read about the the actual signature right here. Anyways, I think the chart itself kind of is, is pretty damn self-explanatory. We've seen all the macro highs in Bitcoin land happen when that blue VWAP gets to quite literally this level right here. You can see, I mean, you can just draw, well, it's actually just drawing a trend line for you. And you can see that uh, pretty much nails all the highs going all the way back to 2011. So I'm talking about this high right here, which <laughs> it's like how much you even trust it out over there. It even shoots up a little bit above. Fair enough, you know, still a little bit more shaky, but, but does work out. Then we have this one right here, obviously in 2013 then we have this one right here in 2014 we have this one in here uh 2017 2018 and then right now you can see that bitcoin's kind of flirting with it it is pretty damn close to it but not quite there just yet so i would say that this is um you know a little bit more a little bit more concerning how uh and probably the closest thing that i'd be looking at that could potentially signal the next uh, the next major high but for right now um still a little bit further away and as you can see it does take a it does take a while for it to, to actually travel up as well so while it does look like it's pretty damn close it would still take some time to actually get that next like you know few millimeters between where my curse currently is right now and where that signature uh is actually well i mean just turned down anyway so uh you know fair enough on that one i mean it's it's, it's even further away right now um okay so what can we look at next we can look at bitcoin valuations over here Another, another, another long-term chart. Um, oh, by the way, you can find all of these at WooBull.com. Willy Woo is a uh, he's he, he he's he, he's a pretty damn interesting guy. I definitely, I definitely recommend checking him out. He deals more with like on-chain metrics, as you're kind of seeing right here. And uh, and while that's not my main driver, because I'm you know I'm not really like a long-term investor. Um, I do think that it is very much relevant to that sort of a crowd. And I think that's uh, I think that's a lot of people on a channel like this. Anyways, what we're looking at right here is we're looking at the top. We're looking at the top cap is what this is called. What is a top cap? Well, you can read the definition down here. It's essentially just the average cap multiplied by 35. Um, and, uh, and what's the average cap? Well, the average cap is the forever moving average of market cap, which is the cumulative sum of daily market cap values divided by the age of, uh, of market and days. A little bit of a lengthy explanation there, but basically, as you can see, it is, it's called all tops uh, in Bitcoin land on all the macro cycles. So we're talking about this one right here. We're talking about this one right here, this one right here, and this one right here. It's the last four perfectly done. And this one, again, it's it's not necessarily good. Oh, motherfucker, I did it. Oh, man, I really did it right there. All right, there we go. <laughs> fucking hate that function on this thing, man. Just put it on trade view for the love of God. I want to be able to look at this uh, properly uh, and without this blinding white in my face. Anyways. Um, uh, so yes, looking at this right here, we do see that it is pretty damn far away from that top area, but this is obviously ever evolving. So it's not going to forecast that in the future. It's going to tell you about when it happens and give you big warning signals as Bitcoin starts to approach this region right here, obviously. So, uh, so again, pretty damn far away for what it's worth right now. And the top side of that would be about one and a half trillion for market cap, which is about a 50% uh, increase from where we're at right now. Well, I guess maybe more more than that because Bitcoin hit about 1 trillion on its move to 58,000 bucks um, last week, I believe that was. So so probably come down a little bit from there, maybe like 900 billion, but ar around the area, essentially, you know, it's, it still works out. Anyways, my point is that it's, it's pretty fucking far away. <laughs> Anyways, uh, moving on, what do we have after that? We have the Bitcoin network momentum. I think this one, this chart is incredibly compelling. Again, another another explanation down here. I don't think that this is uh, completely necessary to get the overall understanding of this chart. And what are we looking at right now? Well. 
we are looking at it. We're seeing a lot of things right here. So you can see that Bitcoin enters its bull market cycles when the network momentum is in an uptrend. It also enters its bear cycles when it's in a downtrend. It's like, okay, very, very clever right there. It also typically ends these cycles, by the way, on divergence calls as well as we see in 2013 and 2014 right here, and then 20, uh, uh, 2017 and 2018 right here. Or, I mean, this is 2017, this is 2018 right here on the actual high. Significant divergence, to be fair. Anyways, my point is, is that right now, we haven't even seen the weekly, or sorry, we haven't even seen this go into an uptrend, which is very compelling. Your uptrend begins right here. <laughs> this is where your uptrend begins. Um, which is pretty damn far away from where we're at right now. This to me looks like an accumulation region uh, over a long period of time. Now, it is turning down currently. Could it be that we're going to go back down and, and, and take another stab at the low of this region? Maybe yes. I'm not so not so uh, sure about that. But I do think that it's incredibly, incredibly interesting that we haven't even seen this go into an uptrend throughout this whole rally from 10,000 to 60,000. So if you are the ultra perma bull, uh, this is probably what you're looking at. Uh, for reference, the last time that we saw an accumulation phase was all the way back down over here. Here's where it actually confirmed the uptrend on uh, right after the actual low. So it didn't necessarily type uh, time the momentum going to the upside all that well, but more importantly, it did tell you that it's no longer time to be short here and it's time to be looking for longs. And you know, over the next years or next uh, half year, you know, obviously it levels out a bit and then your big massive bull market does begin. You can see that starts right here and well, just off to the races after that. Anyways, my point is on this one is that we haven't even entered into an upturn on this, which I keep on coming back to and I've been holding off on uh, throwing this information out there because I thought it would be too good to be true. <laughs> Basically, I mean, it does kind of sound ridiculous um, to say that, but technically speaking, uh, and this has been just about perfect in the past, we don't even enter into like bull market territory. That that can't be right, though. I mean, this is a fucking bull market. Bitcoin went 200 percent to the upside. You know, so take this as a with a grain of salt. But according to this chart, it would say that we haven't even entered into that uh, into what would be similar to the actual breakout of um, of 2016 coming out of this uh, coming out of this market cycle right here, and then this same sort of accumulation right here. Now you will notice that both of these precipitous moves were actually pretty damn aggressive as well before entering into that region. So you know, could you make a correlate between that and what we're looking at right now? Maybe yes, that could work as an explanation, but I, I'm not so sold on it myself. So I think this is one of those charts that I'll just kind of give my opinion on it, but say at the end of the day, you know, make, make your own opinion about this one. I think that this is really, really compelling data if, uh, you, know, you know, if you are looking at that long term. By the same token, it also suggests that we're probably going to come down. To, you know, it's just put in put in another lower high if it is right now. So testing the downside probably going to be uh, the next sort of segment of this uh, of this leggy market. Um, okay, so that's network momentum. Let's also look at Bitcoin price models. Or I think we already did this. Uh, no, we looked at valuation models. Here's price models. It's the same thing. I think it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, so we've already covered that. The top cap right here. Uh, let me just make sure that this is yes. Okay, yes. Both both top caps. So same shit, just different, uh, just different uh, other metrics on this chart, and same interpretation. So we'll get rid of that one. We don't need it. We're out. Okay, so what's another couple? What's another couple ways that you can actually judge the next market cycle high? Like when is the party over? Because I think that's what uh, that's a lot of people's uh, questions right now. When is the when when is when is the mega bull over? Well, here's another way that you can use that has been actually perfect since the dawn of time of Bitcoin. Will it get the ultimate higher for you? No. Will it get the momentous drive to the downside? Actually, yes, it will. And every time, every fucking time, Bitcoin has had a weekly reversal. We have seen our major massive bull markets and our major massive bear markets. We're talking about, you know, hundreds of percents to the upside versus usually like 70 to 80 percent to the downside. So what do I mean by this? Well, you can see that we basically start off in an uptrend right here. You know, you get you know, you get your higher high closure. Boom. Good. Off to the races. I'll start with. Um, I'll start with this one right here. You can see that this one obviously puts in the high. Where's your reversal? Well, your lower high is right here at about 11 and a half, 11 and a half bucks. Your continuation is below 7, 780. So bull market over right there. Boom, reverses for the next, I don't know, uh, almost a year it looks like. And uh, we got our uptrend confirmed on this closure right here. And there's your bull market, you know, going up to the fucking heavens. Same thing over here. Where's your reversal? Well, here's your high. Here's your lower high. Here's your continuation. Boom, down. That's your, and by the way, it doesn't look like much, but this is, 
a 50% move from the reversal confirmation, by the way. Uh, and then to the upside, same thing. I mean, this is just incredible right here. This one, this one confirms its uptrend right here on higher highs, 770% to the upside. And then same thing in 2013, 2014. High right here, lower high right here, continuation point right here, boom, down. <laughs> really heftily down. Uh, do, does get a, get, uh, this one does get a pretty damn nasty bull trap, to be fair. Uh, but this one down about 77 and a, and a quarter percent. Um, then we get your full on reversal uh, right here on the weekly, closing on higher highs. And that's your bull market uh, for the next couple of years. And it goes up about 6,338 fucking percent. Um, then same thing in 2017, 2018. High, lower high, continuation point right here. And what happens after that? Well, if you actually short the uh, the lower high, then <laughs> that's an 81 and a quarter percent move to the downside. If you short the continuation point, still 76 and three quarters. I mean, <laughs> it's Still, I think both of those are pretty damn good. So as it is right now, does Bitcoin have any uh, lower highs in place? No. Does Bitcoin even have a high in place right now? Actually, also no. Um, problem is, though, CME actually did confirm a bearish engulfing here. So so there's that. <laughs> so there's that, um, which would actually be implying some, you know, some downwards pr uh, pressure here, too. Uh, so fair enough you know we're talking about very 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 long term so the case that i'm kind of constructing right now is is a case saying hey uh while bitcoin could have some downside here maybe even come all the way down to well where'd your last where'd your last higher low be uh 30 31 thousand bucks <laughs> it's another another fifteen thousand bucks no problem sir <laughs> um <laughs> then you actually do get your reversal below there. That's your continuation point. And I imagine a lower high somewhere in the uh, in the mid $40,000 region, if that were going to happen. But my point is that it's so far, it's so far away. It's not even worth talking about right now. Um, what else? What else can we use to do this? Uh, I, I mean, every high in Bitcoin land has been accompanied by daily daily bearish divergence. But to be fair, this one actually did have bearish divergence from this point this, to this point. Um, but that's not a call in and of itself. What you typically see on the highs is like three drives of bearish divergence, which we can show back on over here. <clears throat> Actually, did we get three? Did we get three drives on this one? Uh, one, two, three. Yep. And third on the high. Boom. Down. Ha, nasty. Um, what about before that in 2013, 2014? But the the problem is is that bearish divergence happens plenty of times on the up uh, on the uptrends as well. It just doesn't really spell doom. But my point is that if you don't have bearish divergence at least of like about three strikes, um, then it's very unlikely that you're even going to be getting. Uh, where it, that it's it's unlikely that it's even a uh, a high to begin with. Like a, it, 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 it kind of strikes it out as being a criteria for a major high. All right, high right here, high right here, high right here. One, two, three, boom, down. <laughs> Nasty. Um, what do we see right here? This one, this one actually does not have it. Oh, so fair enough. Okay, that that destroys that theory, but uh, but I do still think that it, it is it is worth mentioning. You do want to see typically around three drives um, for that to really start to play out. Um, okay, cool. Is there? I, I feel like there's there uh, there there's definitely one or two more things. Um, that I want to talk about as well. Maybe it was to do with the weekly. Um, yeah, so another big one would be weekly historic volatility percentile. Uh, we've never seen a high in Bitcoin land put in on the macro scale if uh, unless if it's like actually full on red. And when I say full on red, I mean like above 90 percentile on a weekly. Uh, this one getting up, uh, this, the, this high was uh, 2018. That was a 94 read. Here's your high in 2013, uh, 2013, 2014. That was a 95 read. Here's your high in 2013. That was a 99 read. And uh, your high in 2012 was a 98 and a half read as well. Again, you do see some instances where it does get pretty damn hot as well. Um, uh, 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 but it's it's not the actual macro high. And of course, we did just kind of document that most of these highs coming in, you know, 94 above. So where, where are we at right now on weekly HVP? We are at just below 80, uh, the 80 percentile. So it's still kind of further away from there. It's not too relevant for what it's worth right now. Also, as far as the jewel goes, we can see that uh, we've never had a high, a macro high in Bitcoin without having that red in the background as that big warning signal. Of course, there have been several highs where red was in the background, but those weren't the macro highs. Again, just kind of, you know, using another method to, uh, to kind of just judge if this is even relevant or not. Now, to be fair, it is, it is flashing red right here, but I think that this red over here is probably a lot more similar to this one over here, getting ready for perhaps, you know, a greater pullback, but that pullback becomes a major opportunity uh, at the same time. So um, the more that I look at the higher term timeframes, the more and more that I do think that Bitcoin could come down here, uh, you, know, you know, into the upper $30,000 level, I, I think would be rather likely. Um, 
But at the end of the day, that likely turns into an, uh, to an, in, into a major opportunity. And also at the end of the day, I go off my ranges first and foremost anyway. So I am, uh, I'm not even, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's what I actually trade off of. This is more or less just fun stuff to talk about at boring fucking tea parties. Anyways, um, is there anything else that I wanted to talk about? What about where the blue is on this one? Um, not as relevant either because we don't really see anything too obvious, but you can see that all these highs have been put in when it gets above about 85 on the jewel. The light blue is what I'm talking about. Again, some of them have not been actual major highs or macro highs. You know, you see this one in 2019 right here. Obviously this played out a very nasty downside move. I mean, we're talking about from top to bottom. A 60 and three quarters percent move right there, but that was not like a macro high to be fair. Uh, and it did, and it did signal that right there. And of course, here's your one in 2017, same shit. This one actually even a little bit on a lower low, sorry, on a lower high that is. Um, and then what do we have before that? You know, this one right here. And then this one right here, kind of all playing within the same narrative. So again, that one actually would be a little bit more, a little bit more, uh, short-term terrifying, but long-term, I really want to see everything kind of lining up with each other to kind of judge the next macro high. So we have several ways here now, and I think that there's a few more that I have not gotten into already. And yet again, another change of scenery as I add to this collective video of all the different things that I'm looking for on a macro cycle top for Bitcoin specifically. Now, of course, some of these will work for other assets, but we are, of course, focusing on Bitcoin in this in this here video. And the next one that I want to talk about is the accumulation distribution indicator, specifically on the monthly time frame. Now, First and foremost, where can you find this indicator? It's pretty simple, actually. It's uh, freely available. It's right here on the public library. It's cumulative distribution indicator with with markers. I use the one from Dove Cosprey. Seems pretty good. And uh, there are several several of them out there. Some of them actually don't line up exactly as well. But this is the one that I can say uh, I've been referencing for a long time now and has been more or less accurate on the whole. So with that in mind, first things first, only applied on the monthly, and we only care about slope changes in this. Now you can see that it both works the upside and the downside here. But the general knowledge is with this indicator is that essentially like a net delta uh, indicator. So what are we looking for? We're essentially looking for sh for shifts in the slope, meaning that whenever it has a positive slope, generally good. Whenever it has a negative slope, generally bad. And then the the curvature of that slope kind of speaks towards the more immediate narrative within that month. Of course, I mean you know it's not like on it's not like going on an hourly um, of uh, of what we're looking at, whether it's accumulation distribution or, or distribution and how aggressive that is within the context of the, of the current trend. So looking at our actual charts right here, you can actually back test this one pretty damn easily yourself. We'll just put it up really quickly here and uh, and I'll take everything. Well, do we want to take everything else off? We can just mark them off uh, as it is. So as you can see, Bitcoin did get a positive slope going back in May 2020. That was quite literally right here coming out of the coronavirus dump when Bitcoin went from about 8,000 bucks to, well, quite literally where we're at right now. And before that, we do see that did have a, have a negative slope change uh, on the January 2020 highs leading into February. That was when Bitcoin was right around 10,000 bucks telling you to get the hell out as coronavirus dump times were coming uh, actually two months later. Not bad in hindsight, obviously. Now, before that, we did see a bit of a slope change from January 2019. You might remember that as the actual low after Bitcoin broke 6,000 to 3,000. And then we saw a nice rally from about 3,000 to 14,000 bucks. Not bad, definitely. And of course, we uh, the time before that, that we actually saw a slope change was right around here. This was a macro cycle high. This was, uh, this, th uh, this was around the $20,000 high. Now, I do want to be very specific. It did not get the actual ultimate high here as, it, as the other iterations that I just showed pretty much did. What it did do is it did tell you that the party was over and it did uh, and it did call the bull trap in February, March incredibly well and told you to stay essentially, uh, well, not long, on, you know, in the long term, uh, going all the way from here to that $31,000 low. Now, of course, before that, we did see a bit of a slope change coming out of the uh, January 2014, 2015 bear market right here. That saw a positive slope curvature in July 2015. And you can see that the rest is history going basically straight up. Now, there was a one off uh, right here where Bitcoin did get a negative slope for actually uh, one, two, three prolonged months. And that actually did correlate with, correlate with price action playing out a nice downside range. The range that I'm talking about is right here. And while it doesn't look like much on a logarithmic chart, this actually was quite the move. As you can see, this was actually, you know, about a 42% move to the downside. So, you know, that is very much relevant. I mean, I think most people would look at a 40% move as pretty damn big. And so it might be, you know, it can certainly play into a more longitudinal analysis as to when you want to have risk on and risk off, of course. 
Now, nothing's perfect as you can see, but it does generally get the moves very, very well. And we can take this even further than that, going all the way back to June 2014 on this bull trap. And then same thing right around here, kind of telling you that the momentum was actually waning on the high in 2013. Before that, we don't really have too much history to be going off of, but you can see that it's been more or less good, I suppose. Although I wouldn't really trust it too much for going way the hell back on over here. And uh, that leads us into our last one, or actually before we get into the last one, well, I would be looking at this right here. And of course, not only do we have a positive slope, we actually saw the curvature increase from January, February, or sorry, from uh, from from, uh, from February to March, which is when this video is being recorded right now. From January to February, however, we saw a bit of a lessening of that slope. And that really told us that in March, we would be going a bit, you know, it doesn't look like much right here, but a little bit sideways, essentially setting within the middle the middle of that range between about 60,000 bucks and 40,000 bucks to the low, or actually more like 30,000 bucks to the low right there. So with all of that, in mind, I do look at that as well, closing around 45,000 bucks, kind of right there in the middle. And that did set into the buys coming into February or sorry, not February. I keep on doing that March where we did increase that curvature, which does tell me that, uh, well, it is once again, pressure onto the upside long-term that is long-term. Of course, we're talking about here. This is a monthly and uh, I would not apply this to any other time frame. I have seen people use it uh, on a weekly. It's, you know, somewhat okay. You can kind of judge it for yourself right here. But again, when we're talking about the macro cycle with uh, Bitcoin, specifically, I would not be using the weekly, I'd be using the monthly. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay, so moving on to the last one, I want to bring up this indicator right here. Uh, this is it. There we go. Bitcoin log curve curve zones. I believe you can find it for yourself just by typing in the uh, in the public library here, Bitcoin, it's going to be Bitcoin logarithm. Oh yeah, there it is. It's already coming up. And I'm specifically using this one by Maboni. <laughs> Maboni. So shout out to him. Um, I haven't tested the other ones to be fair, but uh, you know, perhaps perhaps they're better, perhaps they're not. Uh, but I can stand by this one right here. And more importantly, we can actually just document it ourselves. Of which you can see that the top side of this curve it has been getting all of the macro cycle highs. Well, going all the way back to 2011, getting the 2011 high right here, getting the 2013 high right here, the 2017 high right here. And I also want to mark off. Off that this that this uh, that the section in 2013, which technically was a parabolic blow off top, actually did t actually did tell you that that was not the ultimate high for that whole cycle, as you can see. The ultimate high was put in a little bit later, about half a year later, at the end of uh, 2013, leading into 2014 right here. <clears throat> so this has actually been pretty damn good. And what I think is even more interesting with this is that if we put on the if we put on the uh, the pie cycle uh, top collar, essentially, you can see that actually <laughs> directly lines up with these two, as it should, you know, these are obviously uh, confluent points here, but I do think that that's rather interesting. Anyways, with all of that said, this as it stands is not necessarily like a fork casting tool. I do want to be very clear in that because I, I fear that someone's going to like immediately look at a hundred thousand bucks right here and be like, that has to be the high for Bitcoin. You know, no, you know, not a cent lower, uh, not necessarily true. As you can see, this does obviously change over time. You know, with each and every passing week, it will be a little bit different, but you can look at it from the longitudinal uh, period of time. And obviously you want to be seen what the differential is between the top side and where, where price action currently is, of which we do see a few weeks above it, you know, usually right around there. But for the most part, pretty damn on point with all of that. And so until I see all of these things really kind of coming into fruition with each other, and I really want to see multiple of them confluent and they should be confluent as you can see, you know, just, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as we demonstrated right there with the Bitcoin, um, pie cycle top and also the Bitcoin logarithmic curve zones, well, they should naturally coincide with each other. So we really want to see, you know, three plus all lining up with each other. That would be a damn good indication that we are going to be in for a mark cycle top and Bitcoin probably does play out one of those, you know, nasty downside moves. Is it going to be as nasty? as the ones prior. I, I, th I think that you can kind of make fundamental arguments, uh, you know, on both sides there, but that's not something I have to worry about just yet. So we'll make a video for that one uh, at a later date, I suppose, as that's going to be another its own like 30 to 40 minute long video, which is just going to be a pain to create. But uh, I do want to have it there. But, you know, first things first, let's actually like find a top for this one. And then we'll come back and do something like that. So with all that said, we've gone over, I don't know how many things now, but I don't know, maybe I'll make like a nice little, uh, uh, what's it called, a uh, clickbait title for this video, like, <laughs> The 10, the top 10 ways to tell when Bitcoin's topped out. Understand that it's just for clickbait, of course, you know, playing the old YouTube game. But uh, but with all of that said, this these are plenty of ways here 
and, uh, and, and they should be confluent. So once I see about three plus of these lining up with each other, I will be willing to call a micro cycle top, uh, I'm sorry, a macro cycle top and understand that some of them are going to be more leading indicator or maybe not leading, although they, they could be considered such. Um, some of them are going to, you know, be a little bit more on point and some of them are going to be a little bit more lagging confirmation tools. The lagging confirmation tools are actually, well, one of them we just actually went over right here, uh, with the accumulation distribution indicator on the monthly specifically, the next biggest one that comes to mind would obviously be the weekly trend because the weekly weekly trend is not going to tell you about the ultimate high. It's going to tell you about the lower high coming after the ultimate high. But still, I mean, you know, when we're looking at a lower high right here, is that really all that bad of a trade or at least or at least a de-risking position when, well, you can kind of see the results for yourself over time. Same thing over here. Doesn't necessarily tell you to get out at about a thousand bucks, but it does tell you to get out at about 900 bucks. Same thing over here. It doesn't tell you to get out at like, uh, what is it? 200 bucks. It tells you to get out at about 150 bucks. And these are massive, massive downside moves uh, afterwards. So some of them are going to be obviously a little bit uh, more preliminary than others, but they should all be kind of stacked up and we'll obviously be going through them uh, when the time actually does indeed come. So for the time being, uh, well, we don't really see any of them actually getting hidden off. So I think this is a great place to kind of end this video. I want to wish you well once again. Take care and until next time.